Now, we talked in the previous video about deriving the rate constant, the rate constant R, for a irreversible reaction. So let's make it a bit more complicated now. Let's start talking about reversible reactions. So reversible reactions are ones where both the forward and reverse reaction occur. And so the one we're going to focus on in this video is what's called the water gas shift reaction. H2O gas plus carbon monoxide gas goes back and forth to CO2 gas and H2 gas. So in the water gas shift reaction, we have oxygen switching places with hydrogen and carbon. Now, if we were just to write out the rate constant for the Ford reaction, let's say we treat this as elementary. Sorry to flip that on you. We would get that the rate on extended reaction basis, R, is equal to K, concentration of CO, concentration of H2O. Now, we're going to designate this with an F for the forward reaction. Now, this is a reversible reaction, so we also have CO2 gas plus H2 gas going to CO gas plus H2O gas. This is the reverse reaction. Now, if it's elementary in one direction, it has to be elementary in the reverse direction. This is going to come part of what's called the concept of microscopic reversibility. Don't worry about that. The point is that if it's reversible in the forward direction, it has to be, if it's elementary in the forward direction, it has to be elementary in the reverse reaction, because you're just backtracking, you're taking the same steps backwards. And so here we get R equals K, concentration of CO2, concentration of H2. Now, we're going to designate this K with an R to designate the reverse reaction. So for a reversible reaction, we had both a forward and reverse rate. So this R here is on extended reaction. How do we actually describe the true rate? Well, the true rate or the total rate is just your forward rate minus your reverse rate. So if my forward reaction is going quickly and my reverse reaction is going slowly, what I expect to see is that you know it's going to basically trudge along. But as the reaction starts going further and further forward, these concentrations begin to build up, which speeds up the reverse reaction, and these concentrations go down, which speed up the, the forward reaction. And at some point, the rates of the forward reverse reactions will be the same. So right now, as written, I have this expression for the rate law. Big, nasty equation. But at equilibrium, meaning that the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are the same, I get that the overall rate has to be zero. So at equilibrium, my net R, my difference between my forward and reverse reactions is zero. So I get K forward, CO, H2O, minus K reverse, CO2, H2, equals zero. Now I can turn around and I can solve this for concentrations, and if I do that, I get that K forward over K reverse equals concentration of CO2, concentration of H2, all over concentration of CO, concentration of H2O. Now for those of you who have done equilibrium, you might recognize this expression on the right. This is the equilibrium constant, KQ. So what we get if we take a rate law, we derive it for a reversible reaction. One, we get that the total rate is the rate of the forward reaction minus the reverse reaction. And ideally, if we can write these as elementary reactions, we just derive each of them, and then we take their differences. Second important point, at equilibrium, this net rate equals zero, so we can solve for the concentrations as a function of both the forward and reverse rate constants. The third, and really kind of interesting, unique, interesting thing about reversible elementary reactions, because of the property of reversible reactions and how we derive this, for a reversible elementary reaction, we should be able to derive the expression for KQ from our rate laws. And this expression for KQ is just the rate, ratio of the rate of the forward reaction, rate constant of the forward reaction, divided by the rate constant of the reverse reaction. 